Hello and welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and today we've got a 2018 uh, just out of warranty Ford Transit Custom with an airbag light on. I'm currently not at work and I'm doing this at another garage so it's another location uh, using some of their tools and some of my tools. So without further ado let's prove the fault. Okay, so as always, I like to show the fault for you. So we're in the vehicle now, sat behind the steering wheel. And so put the ignition on. Obviously the airbag light will come on and it will go out after it's self-check. And then it'll come straight back on again. Um, fault's been there for a couple of weeks now. Um, garage have got a little bit stuck. Not sure what they've done. They've not replaced any parts. They've just been looking around. They keep deleting the fault codes, but it comes straight back on again. So let's get some um, fault codes up and let's take this job a little bit further. Okay, so we've got um, just the old four scan on the um, job at the moment. And looks like we do have some fault codes stored. So we've got fault codes in the body control module, uh, fuel pump. Run start control, ignition key removal, uh, three fault codes in the ABS, the ABS pump motor control, high speed can communication, battery voltage. These are the ones I'm more concerned with. Restraints control module, we've got driver front stage one deployment control open circuit. Uh, passenger frontal stage one deployment control open circuit and battery voltage as well. And then we've got a couple of um, air conditioning unit fault codes and one in the uh, power steering control module. Okay, so back to the restraints control module. Uh, two fault codes here, passenger and driver airbags. Um, personally, thinking about this, I can't see that we've got two faulty airbags failed at the same time. Um, more likely to be a wiring issue somewhere. There's probably going to be a common denominator. We'll have to get the wiring diagram up. Let's just have a look at some live data. So let's get the RCM up and get the relevant data PIDs. So let's get them up there. So they're the ones we're wanting. And straight away there, you can see we've got 10 ohm resistance on the driver's stage one and the six ohms on the passenger's stage one. Usually as a rule of thumb, anywhere about four or five ohms will flag the fault code uh, for an open circuit. So as I said before, I don't think we're looking at a component failure, but it's not difficult to get the driver's airbag off. So I'm just going to start at the driver's airbag, see if I can bypass it using a bypass resistor, see if that makes any difference. Um, and failing that, we're going to work back, have a look at the wiring diagram and see if we can see a common denominator. Also bearing in mind, we do have the other fault codes in there as well for ABS and there's dashboard fault codes as well, if I remember right. Um, so we could have a, a common denominator large multi-plug somewhere that's probably got pin grips or a, a poor connection or something so yep so let's get the driver's airbag out let's get the resistor on it and see if we can bypass it and see if we can make any difference okay so we've looked at the live data and we've seen on the driver's side we've got a resistance of 10 ohms and the passenger side 6 ohms with the permanent fault codes of open circuit i've not tried deleting the fault codes as of yet and like I said earlier on, highly unlikely that it's going to be two separate um, airbag concerns. Probably looking at a common denominator. However, never presume and presume, presumption is a mother of all cock-ups. So as it's easier to take off the driver's airbag first, which I've already done. Um, what I'm going to do is just using a bypass resistor. I'm just going to bypass the driver's side airbag and see what value we get and move backwards um, possibly then if it doesn't cure it or it doesn't make a difference go to the steering column control unit and uh, bypass it there 
and then get the wiring diagram out and see if we've got any common denominators for both issues. So let me just get it set up. Okay, so as you can see there, I've got it connected into the connector itself. And as you can see on the um, display, we're still showing 10 ohms resistance. So the next thing I'm going to do is disconnect this connector here on the steering column unit. I'm just going to check on the wiring diagram which wire it is. I'm going to bypass the wires there and see if we've got an airbag um, steering wheel control unit issue. Incidentally, I've just taken out the connector here for the uh, resistor. And as you can see on the screen, we're showing 66 ohms, which is what I usually see for an open circuit. So I'm now connected into the connector on the steering column unit uh, using the same bypass resistor and as you can see on the screen I've still got 10 ohms resistance. So we've got an issue now further ahead between this connector and the restraints control module itself so it's time to look at the wiring diagram and possibly now we're looking at this being the issue with the passenger airbag as well. Okay so we're still concentrating on the driver's airbag and as I can't show the wiring diagrams because of copyright concerns I've drawn my own and as you can see for the passenger airbag and the driver's airbag they run through a common multi-plug C0210 which is situated in the passenger side left hand side uh, kick panel area around the glove box sort of area so let's locate that and let's have a quick look at that check the connections check the pin grips and see if we can identify any concerns. Okay, so I've just lowered the glove box and just put the light in there and we've got a connector block here and there's one tucked away which is probably difficult to see uh, tucked away at the back. So I just need to see which one of these two connectors it is so I can disconnect it, have a quick look and see if we can find anything. But I'm thinking that I'll probably, if it's at all possible, have to take out this trim here. So as you can see I've got the trim out and um, to give me a little bit more room I can see that connector then and there is still one behind it which is still difficult to see on the camera so what I've got to do now look a quick look on the wiring diagram and see which one of these plugs it actually is. Okay, so I think I've found the problem. I think the problem lies in this connector block here. Um, as you can see on the bottom there, there is two little cutouts with some white lugs in there and the same on the top. Once the other part of the connector is latched into place, it um, automatically then just moves that a little bit. Then if you slide this white clamp down, it locks into position. What's happening is this one here underneath my index finger is broken the little black part is broken someone's been here before me and so it's not making a good connection um, don't really know how I'm going to get around this ideally it does require a new dashboard harness so let's see what I can do okay so what I've done I've had to take off the latch mechanism uh, and manually put it together latch both sides of this connect it across and then I'm going to loop it um, with a cable tie either side to make a nice tight connection um, and then recommend really that the customer replaces the dashboard harness. So what I'll do now, I'll just go back onto live data and see what we've got. So as you can see now I've got it all connected back up, uh, airbag connected, ignition back on and we've got a resistance of 3 ohms on the driver's side, 2 ohms on the passenger side. So that's good enough for me. So what I'm going to do now, just going to clear the fault codes. And that seems to have fixed that. So although it's a bit of a, not a nice fix, I am going to recommend it as a new dashboard harness, which bearing in mind the vehicle is not under warranty. A lot of work involved, a lot of expense. I can't see it happening. And just to prove it's a fix, I'm going to put the ignition on. So the airbag will go out 
conduct its self test and it stays out. Thanks for watching guys.